We'll just take and pull those off. Like, and what we want to do is uh, get the pins out of here. We're going to get a some Mod Podge on here. We're going to go ahead and uh, do the back sides. Just put a little on there, like. I use clear uh, acrylic latex caulk if you want. Just get it on the back side. Now we've got some tissue paper here. Virtually the same thing as you buy in the uh, taxidermy supply stores. Turns transparent. Or fairly close to it. But what we want to do is we want to get a piece that's big enough to go over this fin here. We'll get two of them, one for each fin. Pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and uh, press that into there. Now work gently with it because it'll tear on you. It's real fragile paper. We got this fin here. We'll go ahead and and just take your brush and press it into the fin rays, and that's all there is to it. Just like. This back fin here. Go ahead and put a little, put some on there. Backing on there, got that fin. Now, pull this pin out here, and I'm going to go ahead and do this dorsal fin here. We need to put a bunch on there. set right into place. And the holder, we'll turn that over, get any lumps out of there we see. Now we're going to do the tail. It's a lot easier doing it than the way I am now because I'm, I'm working kind of backwards, holding this backwards. You see the gaps in the tail? You end up with that sometimes. We'll fill those in nicely. We're not going to lose any sleep over that. We're just going to go ahead and put this on there to fill her in. You see how nicely that filled that in. We're going to go ahead and get some more in there. See that? Now what we'll do is we'll turn this baby over. We're going to go ahead and put some on the front of this. And especially this tail. I like to get money on the tail because people move and they get start beating these fish up and you put that flexible caulk on there it really saves the fins when you move it so anyway it looks pretty good also what we're gonna do we're gonna cut another little piece here and I'll show you here we got a little bit of a hole here in this back fin see that you always want to coat this fin too. 
Don't have to be as good, you, but you want some strength in it. And uh, we ended up getting something different there. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to patch that, put our little piece in there, and then we'll cut it out. be bad. Let me get this baby to stick here. Okay. I'm going to have this piece right here. Okay. I'm going to check this out. Make sure everything's sticking good. Give it a little chance to set and then press it in there. But anyway, that's the way that's going to be. We've got everything looking fairly good. All the stuff is dry and nice, and uh, we'll come back to this when we get ready to put the latex on there, on the fins. You just try to do your best on, and what it does, it takes some practice, you know. Now if you remember, we did, this is going to be a, a pedestal type fish. It's going to be sitting like kind of an aggressive after another fish. And you can see I did some of the other fins on here. And we're going to go ahead and give those another coat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to work on this belly area here. We're going to pull these pins out. The ones that you can get out, go ahead and get out. If they're, some are too deep, you just can't get them. Uh, you can pry them out with something, but anyway, just pulling all the pins out that were holding this in place. We could have got a tighter fit on this if I wanted to alter the form a little bit, but I want this to be look large, I guess. I didn't want to make it too much smaller. A lot of times you can't get the forms to fit the fish really good. I don't know. It just seems like sometimes they just don't fit good. Now I'm going to cut this little piece of fin backing paper off so I can see what I'm doing here. And like, all you do is you just cut it and then we're going to go ahead and now before I paint this fish, we'll take and give these a coat of uh, acrylic latex, crystal clear caulk, and that'll really make them flexible. But what we're doing is I'm getting these staples out of here. What's going to happen is our uh, our our two-part epoxy is going to hold this thing together. And I'll show you right here. I'm going to get this two-part epoxy sculpt. We'll start working with this right now. And this will give us a basic understanding of what I'm doing here. I'll mix up a generous amount. 50-50 mixture of magic sculpt. you got a hardener and then you've got a resin. I use the natural. You can get it in different colors, but the natural, it seems like I use that more than anything. Works real good for repairing deer antlers. Okay, what you do is you knead that up till it's an even mix.
Sometimes it takes a little bit to get that mixed up. You see that? We're mixing her together, getting a nice even mix. This is a little bit more difficult of a project than just a, a single sided fish. Because we got we're gonna paint both sides of it to look realistic. I mean it's just a little bit different. So what we're doing, we're gonna roll out a little bit here. I'm gonna press it right into the seam here. Just go ahead and you can wet your finger and get yourself a little bit of water here. What we want to do is we want to bring this up on the form a little bit here on the fish. You see that right here? You always have a little bit of shrinkage on a fish no matter what. I, I always do anyway and I think most people do. Just go ahead and kind of round that bottom a little bit like just make it look nice look real let's keep it real please as they say gotta remember we got two sides of this fish now so we're doing we gotta be cognizant aware of the other side right over here we've got to do both sides so you just kind of see how we're doing this now and you'll have a lot of shrunken areas on the fish that you have to repair like up around the gills and that uh, and we'll get to that but we're going to get this belly area I've been looking at this fish for a little while here in the shop and I gotta start Every time I look at it, it's like beckoning me to come finish him. Well, I should. And that's what we're doing. We've got to get this thing finished. But it's a lot easier to do it when you're not videotaping because you don't have to be quite on your game like you are when you're videotaping. you got to be a little bit on your game. And... Uh, Now see we're right in here by the fin. And just press that in there. And then we're just gonna make that smooth. You see that? See how kind of we're, kind of we're filling that in nicely. This is my pin that I had for <laughs> sticking it up and letting it dry. Which is all right. That's nothing wrong with doing that. We got the anal area here. And then you just take and smooth that out a little bit. Blend it up into the scales. I kind of flatten this piece out because we're going to cover a little bit more area here. And then I'm going to wrap it around here. What we're going to do is we're going to build this anus area up just a little bit. And you've got to be aware of this other side, remember. Just make a, we got this built up a little bit now, and just make a little indentation right there. And it'll look like a little butt. If you've got a flyer sticking up here, scale, just go ahead and knock it loose. And you see how we're, we're going along here?
want to do is we want to add more to it if we have to. I can see kind of a low spot right here, so just go ahead and add to it and smooth it out. See that? If it's a little bit wet, that's good. You see this up here? I'm going to go up here a little bit. It's kind of rough. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover up these rough edges. Just smooth them down. What we do is we go all the way up this side like this, all the way up the belly. I know it seems like a lot of work, but this is a, it'll be worth it. When you see the finished product, I mean, they don't look too good when you're doing them like this. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. It's, Just keep going all the way up. Go ahead and put some in here. I want to keep keep it kind of level along here so it looks like it's natural and you don't have a sharp break there to, between the natural scales and the fake ones that we're going to make here. Take each end and bend it like so at almost a right angle. And what you have then is an ideal scale maker. Use your little ones where the little scales go. Use your big end where the big ones go. See that? Okay. What we do We'll just go ahead and start here. We're doing the little ones back here. And what you do is you just get yourself a pattern going. You got to go halfway. Is it's kind of, sometimes it's kind of tough to follow this <laughs> but we'll get her you see how we're getting those scales set in here now remember we got to go oh, we got to go around this other side too another thing you can do is you can scratch them in with a little sharp off and that works pretty good too you see this little little pin I got here with the little handle on it well I picked it up somewhere but Make a make a then what you can do is you just wet this a little bit. I like to knock the edges down. You see that scale pattern on there? I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's hold this down. Let's see if we can get a couple more made here.
You can also do this when it's dry. Doesn't have to be done when it's wet. I just like to keep things going, flowing. Oh, well, remember we got this side here we got to worry about too. Remember that. Well, you just do this scale pattern. Just draw it in or use your uh, scaler like this, scale maker. Just press it in. Don't forget to overlap them the way they should be. You see that? Either way works fine. Just go ahead and hit that with a little water. Get your scale pattern. See that? It kind of waters it down. It takes the edge off of it. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and work on up here. There's no sense in burning up uh, tape. So I'll get back with you after we get up here, and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, we're back here at this walleye. I told you we were going to work on the scale pattern a little bit, and we did. Just smooth it out a little. And as you can see, what you do is you're just breaking up that, that you don't want a real smooth bottom, but we're breaking that up so when we paint it, it'll look nice. And uh, let's see if I can bring that in a little closer to see how that scales up. We can still, and what we'll do is that after this dries, we'll go ahead and we'll etch in a few more right here. Let me see if we can do it. You just go and that'll break it up into the real scales here. And we'll fix this area up here. We'll put some on here. But we'll go ahead and get the, all this stuff done up here. But you can see what I'm doing here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this two-part epoxy. I'm going to pull these off the gills here. And... Uh, we're going to fill in spots along here that need to be filled in. And I'll show you when we get them filled, as we're doing it. Get this thing ready to get the gill plate things off and uh, the backing material. We'll get that and then we'll get this thing ready to go. We'll finish this up here, do around the eyes and that. And we'll get this thing just about ready to go to be painted. Yeah, I just mixed and, up some more epox epoxy sculpt. What we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off right here on this bottom. We're going to go ahead and get that started. We'll work our way up here. That is a pretty, pretty good idea where we're going here now. Get that filled in a little bit and then put some water on it. Now be careful you don't cut yourself on a scale. If you got a scale that's a high riser here, you could end up getting cut. Kind of blend that in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, you see right here, these are real shrunken areas here around the mouth. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do the throat latch area here, but we're going to fill these in first right here. Now be careful of the teeth. You don't want to get your... doesn't take a lot to fill this in, but you just want to round it up a little bit because a lot of taxidermists don't even fill this in. They just go ahead and paint over it. And that's why sometimes you'll see them out. One of the first things I do is I look at the mouth area like that and see if they took the extra time just to f fill these places in. You know, just to fill that out and make it look real. But if you know what you're looking for on there, the fish should have, it's kind of fleshy, kind of a puffy, fleshy look to it. We'll go 
ahead and put some on here. Ooh, boy, I gotta get that coyote out of here. He started to get a little gamey. Had some coyotes come in and kind of stinking up the joint now. Every once in a while you gotta go to the dump and unload some of this stuff. Anyway, now a lot of guys, what they don't do either is they don't fill in the lip area here. They don't do this lip here, and that really shrinks up. So what I do is I roll out a good piece, and then I'll just go ahead and fill that in. Because that, that, that'll look a lot better than not filling it in. You don't want a shrunken looking deal right there. A lot of people are going to come up and the first thing they're going to look at is that mouth. So we want it to look good. And you see how it kind of shrunk right around in here. So we'll just go ahead and add on to there. Just make it look nice. See that? Now they've done that look a lot better than this side here that's all boogered up. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and, that's a little bit too much, we're just going to go ahead and fill this in right here. Make that look nice. It, it just gives it just a little bit flushier look like than just not doing it because then it doesn't look that so hot. But anyway, that gives it a nice fleshy mouth right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to build this up a little bit here and come right up into here. There's a little muscle that goes down through here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to make us a little roll here. Just going to go... Just make yourself a little bit of a blend that in up here. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bring that on up into here. Right up into here and build up this throat latch area. We'll bring her down here. See how I'm doing that? Go ahead and build that up a little bit. You can put a layer on and then come back, but you got to get it pretty close because this stuff gets hard as a rock. You see how I'm kind of building this up right here. You do most of this with your fingers, but sometimes you have to get your epoxy sculpt, just some tools out and, and do it too, so. What we're doing is we're just adding on to here. Now I'm going to start wetting that see just what we look like here. You'll push it around a little bit, so you just have to push it back. See, we've got a little bit of an area right here. Anyway. Get this smooth here, otherwise all those lumps will show when that dries out. You see how that's coming together there? Just kind of smooth it a little bit. And if you look like it, it looks like now here's a place right here that needs some in here. see some areas that need it, just go ahead and put it in there. Just wet it down afterwards. Go 
go ahead and put it in here. And a little bit more there. To get it. Okay. You see how we got that now? You come by here. Press this in there. with that. Now what I'm going to do is I would let this dry a little bit right here. But what we're going to do is usually back by the tail area here you have some areas that are just kind of sunken in and I want to go ahead and uh, get those fixed up before we go too far too. And that's just just build it up like this and then just go ahead and make your scale detail after you get it in there. The tails, you usually get a little bit of a shrunken area around there. Uh, anyway, this will give you an idea of how to do with some of this stuff. Let me go ahead and make a nice transition up into the area right here. Then we'll do some scale detail there. You gotta kind of watch what you're doing here. But anyway, you got two sides on this one here, so we'll flip it over and do the other side. But we'll go ahead and do our scale detail and uh, just go ahead and You know, you can always scratch this in after it's after it's dry too. And we're just what we're doing is we're getting a little bit of a relief on there, or a little bit of a detail that'll break it up going from the real scales into the other ones, into the fake ones here. Clean off your tool a little bit, and here we go again. Anyway, you can see how I'm just kind of making that little detail there. And when you paint that, that'll really make a difference. You see that? Now just take a little water, smooth that out a little bit. Like When that dries, you'll see a little bit of detail in there. Put my finger in it here. So that's how you do that. We got that side done pretty well. You see how we got that going? It's going to be a pretty good looking fish. Uh, we got this. We did some around the eye already. Uh, we'll fill in up on the head here. Right here you'll see there's some... Uh, let me get this so I can hold it. Right up in this area here. We'll fill that in with some uh, epoxy sculpt and then around the eye here a little bit. You see that? We got to do around the eye.
take this out of here a little bit. That's kind of a just build that up. Then you can smooth it out. This area right here usually has to be filled in too. Let's, uh, we'll fill this in. The thing I'll show you a little trick here we gotta do. We gotta remember where the nostrils are here. So, just go ahead and fill that and get a nice smooth transition there. And go ahead and go up on top of the head here. Fill that in too. Heads really shrink. Now what you do is, I remember where the nostrils were, right around here, I could feel that it, the pin goes in, and there's another one right here. So we'll just go ahead and make two of those on that side. We'll come over to this side, do the same thing. Just go ahead and make a nice transition there. Come up to the nose here. But anyway, we'll go ahead and make our two holes here. Perfect. Now I'll fill this in right in here too. Then we'll come back and do a few other little things here. When you put your finger in the mouth like this, be a little bit careful. You don't want to puncture your hand with the teeth. Got that pretty well. We'll let it dry and see what happens. I got a little shrinkage here. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just smooth that out with a little bit of this stuff. That way we got that smoothed out. Looks good. Uh, make this look just a little bit better here along this edge. There we go. You see that? We can put a little bit right here too. Get that built up a little bit. That looks good. Go ahead and just go ahead. I'm gonna put just a little bit more right here. I want to blend that transition into the back a little bit better. Yeah. Okay, we got that done. Now, we're going back over here to the bottom. I'm going to finish up the scale detail here. 
and then uh, we'll put her up for the night and come back when we're ready to do some more on her. I cut a few of the fins backing off so we don't want to do too much of it. But you see here how it dried real clear. We're just going to take and cut those off where you think that fin should be. And there you go. Just go ahead and cut them off. Just follow around the fin. You can always go back and, and recut them. It's no biggie if you don't get it all the first time. Okay? Anyway, the fins are kind of rounded on the walleye. At least on this one they were. Okay, we've got the fins done. You take a paper clip and you just unbend it like this and you end up with it just like this. You take your needle nose pliers and bend a 90 degree angle on both ends. Then you end up with a large one for larger fish scales and one for smaller ones and all you do is just press that down into your epoxy sculpt and overlap them and you can make nice fish scales with it.